Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and a year ago I came out as trans. Well, came out properly as trans. I had come out before then, but it was on April 1st, at the end of the video, and a lot of people didn't watch that video, so very easy to miss. But anyway, when I made that coming out video, I was definitely speaking from the point of view of someone who wasn't out yet. And there is a big difference between being trans and being trans and having come out. Of course, I already knew that there were some differences, but there's a difference between knowing something and actually going through something. And I think that's something that a lot more people need to understand. There are quite a few people out there that will say, oh, well, why don't you just do this? Not realizing that there is a reason that the phrase easier said than done exists. And also things have changed in the past year. I mean, if I were to compare me now to how I looked back then, I'm pretty sure I look very different. And because of all of that, I thought it was a good idea to make a video on what exactly has changed since coming out. I wasn't exactly planning on putting a title screen here. So, I mean, that, that works, I guess. <laughs> so the number one thing that has changed since coming out is that People acknowledge that I'm trans now. That doesn't sound like a big revelation, but it's actually a little bit more surprising than you might think. Turns out that there are a lot of people that had already guessed that I was trans, but just didn't say anything. And I think one of the reasons for that is it can feel kind of rude to a lot of people to assume that someone is trans just because they're growing their hair out or wearing nail polish. That being said, as much as some people had figured it out, there were some people that were absolutely shocked that I, I of all people would be trans. I think a lot of that probably came from people that viewed my content as being scientific, but only on the basis that I was a cis guy. You see, there's a lot of people out there that view being trans as being unscientific. So I can't be scientific if I'm trans in that case. Of course, that has nothing to do with any arguments that I put forth. I mean, I haven't changed my stance on the earth being round or flat. It's still round. I'm not wrong on that. This also ignores the fact that being trans isn't unscientific. In fact, me transitioning in the way that I have has been utilizing science. Like, why do you think I take HRT? It isn't because some new age mysticist came up to me and said, if you take this pill, you will become a girl. No, it's because I looked into the effects of HRT and realized, oh, most of these sound really nice. But that being said, since I came out, I have actually realized that there are some effects of HRT that haven't been so great. So the main one is to do with the hormone blocker that I was on, spironolactone. So before starting that, I was told that there were going to be side effects. One of the main ones is that it is a diuretic, so you pee a lot. But it turns out that side effects can have side effects. Like one of the obvious ones is that it led to me feeling a bit more dehydrated than I normally would. But there was another one too. But this other side effect uh, required uh, laxatives to solve. And it turns out that that side effect itself had another side effect that I'm not going to get into. Needless to say, I was not informed that this could be a potential chain of events. Obviously, it's not going to happen to everyone because otherwise I would have been informed, I, as I would hope. So what I recommend for anyone considering starting feminizing HRT is take a look into the options that you are given for testosterone blockers. Sure, cyprotone can have an impact on your liver, but for me at least, spironolactone was worse. It can also have an impact on what progesterone does for you if that's something that you want to take. So these are all things that you should keep in mind. And none of this is to say that HRT should be heavily restricted or anything like that, because had it taken any longer for me to get on HRT, I might have considered DIY. And had I done DIY spironolactone, then I wouldn't have realized that some of the effects that I was getting from that was caused by the spironolactone. And that's not to say that DIY HRT shouldn't be done, because for some people, that is the only option. But anyway, there is another negative effect of HRT that I want to talk about. But I feel like to talk about this negative effect of HRT, there is something else that I should probably talk about. And it's the fact that it feels like being openly trans, to some extent, my sexuality gets policed. Now this doesn't come from trans people, but it comes from people wanting to paint us as being degenerate. There are negative stereotypes about trans people that simply aren't true. Like apparently trans people are transitioning because of sissy hypno... what? 
Now that is a bit of an extreme example, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't stem from other stereotypes that people hold of us. So when it comes to trans people talking about anything sexual, it is often seen as a confirmation of those stereotypes. Even me saying something as seemingly innocuous as, oh, I felt my boobs jiggle and that gave me a bit of euphoria, is taken as, oh, well, this person's just addicted to porn or, this person is autogynephilic. In reality, no, I just want bigger boobs and I get euphoria from signs that my boobs are growing. And it's one of those things where if I'm not allowed to talk about something like that because it will give people a negative view on trans people, well then what about more explicit things that might be important? Now the reason why I talk about this is because there is a negative effect that I did experience. Atrophy. There is a very easy way to prevent atrophy though. However, there's not a lot of guidance out there on how to prevent atrophy. Sure, people say, oh, do this and you'll prevent it, but they don't say how much you need to do it. And I think that's a bit of a problem if there's something that you want to prevent, but you're not given good instructions on how to prevent it. But I do feel like it's hard to talk to people about this because there are a lot of trans people that don't mind atrophy at all. In fact, some of them even welcome it. But then mentioning it in a public space can feel kind of inappropriate because there are a lot of people out there that are willing to take anything sexual that a trans person says to paint trans people in a bad light. But even me mentioning this in this video has been kind of difficult because, okay, how do I talk about this in such a way that my words will not get taken out of context to paint trans people in a negative light? And I don't know whether I've succeeded in that. But on the atrophy subject, which I kind of don't want to brush over because it was something that did make me wonder what am I going to do about this? But what I have found helped me was using it twice a week, and that seemed to work. But that being said, in the last year, it hasn't all changed for the worse. In fact, there have been some changes for the better. Because of HRT, how I look has changed, but I can't really go out and present as a guy anymore. That ability seemingly has just completely disappeared from my skill set. I've also found that some of the clothes that I used to wear as a guy, I've tried them on, and I've found that... I actually don't look bad in them. And I'm pretty sure this is because of HRT because I never got that feeling when I wore them as a guy. That's not something that I was ever really expecting to be honest, but it does mean that I don't really need to get rid of them, which I suppose is good. I have also found that it has been annoying to shave before any video. Before I came out, I could get away with just not shaving because people would go, oh, this is a very manly, manly man. And so I could just get away with having a bit of facial hair, but now, People will point that out if I have too much. And so because of that, I decided to get a laser. I just have to shoot my face with it and that will hopefully reduce the amount of hair I have on it. It is a little bit annoying that I have to kind of let my facial hair grow in order to use it well, but hopefully in the long run, things will work out better. Which is kind of the whole thing of transitioning, isn't it? It's not done within a week. Sure, there are some changes that happen surprisingly fast, but it takes a while. Sometimes there are annoying things that you've got to work on, like voice training is really difficult. I have been trying, but it has been very difficult to find a voice that seems natural and suits me. Um, I'm not sure when I'll find that voice. Fortunately, I can use my reading comments videos to play around with my voice a bit more than I normally would. Like, sure, some of the voice... Sure, some of the voices sound like this, but then some of them are a bit more trying to be a bit more feminine, I guess. Though that could also help with me going into something like voice acting as well, so multiple good things can come from that. Now, I don't have a good segue into this next topic, so we're just gonna jump into it. There is something that I have noticed about talking about trans stuff on the internet, and that is that it's not reflective of being a trans person in real life. And what I mean by that, and it's kind of worked its way into this video as well to some extent, which I do apologize for. It's not really my intention, but it can kind of seem like a lot of the space is taken up by the negative stuff rather than the positive stuff. Because I feel like there is a lot more positivity in being trans than negativity. And I feel like the reason for that is that there's a lot more to talk about when it comes to the negative stuff. There's only so many ways in which you can say that your life has improved. 
it's a lot easier to talk about all the ways in which your life has gotten worse. And on top of that, I feel like for anything that has gotten worse, there's a lot more that you can say about it. Like you can give recommendations on how to avoid a particular negative thing. You can say what you think might have gone wrong. You can link it to other things as well. And for trans stuff in particular, there is definitely a push by people to make things worse for trans people, which is going to mean that there is more negative stuff to talk about. And that really wears people out, especially when the stuff that is being talked about affects their life. As a result, the people that talk about this kind of stuff are the people that have less of a stake in the game. The people that can make money from generating outrage. Outrage also sells pretty well, that's why it seems like there's always something new that people are mad about, even if it's just something benign. And then you've got people who demand that if you're a trans person then you have to justify every bad thing that a trans person has ever done. Which, you know, also gets very tiring. As a result, a lot of the positives of transitioning feel like they get overshadowed by the negatives. Even though I can definitely say that I would rather be trans than not trans. And I don't mean that in a I want to be trans kind of way. Because if I were a cisgender woman, I think I'd be fine with that, actually. I mean that in a way of the benefits of me transitioning from who I used to be outweigh the negatives. Like, I am no longer apathetic about my body or my image, and that may sound like a very benign thing to some people, but for me, it actually has become quite important. I now have a lot more reason to look after myself. And sure, it can be hard sometimes. Sometimes people say, hey, you need to eat more, and I mean, I know, but food can cost money, and I need to budget sometimes. All in all, I've found that I've enjoyed being trans much more than I've disliked it. If I didn't, I wouldn't be trans. It's that simple. It doesn't mean that it's perfect, and I find that nothing in life ever is perfect. But it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be better. And that's what's important. Like, I could go on about all the negative things, and like I was tempted to do that, but then I realised how much... It would feel like I'm saying that being trans is negative when it's not, at least not to me. But then again, on the other hand, sometimes you've got a good reason to talk about negative things because if you don't talk about them, then how can things ever improve? So yeah, that is another huge thing that I've learned since coming out and I feel like it's the most important, so it would be a good place to end, but we could end on something funny. But before we do that, I do want to mention that a day after this video goes live, I will be doing a Q&A live stream where you can ask me anything about my transition or even what I've learned because there are things that I haven't been able to mention in this video for the sake of not making it too negative. I, I don't want to present transition as being something negative when it has been overwhelmingly positive. Also, knowing me, I've probably forgotten to mention something, so uh, yeah. Anyway, the funny thing that I've learned is that if you're trans, you kind of have to keep on coming out as trans. I, I don't know how that happens, but there are people that don't realize that I'm trans after seeing some of my more recent videos. You'd think that it would be obvious simply from the fact that there are Magic the Gathering cards right there. Or I guess a, there is a trans flag back there as well. That, that, that might also help. Maybe I just have to find a way to come out in every video. Um, I could start with a hoi hoi, it's your favorite Kiwi trans girl here, Planner Walk. I, I, let me know what you think of that. <laughs> anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you liked that video. Leave a comment letting me know why that just turned off. I, I was just about to finish. Be sure to join me in the live stream where I will see you. Between you and me, thank you for watching.